So, what is the use here of integration? It is to find the area. So let me think. I feel like, <coughs> yes, I will give you a short proof of this. That's not an excuse for not doing the homework, MB, and you know it. Yeah? I wasn't here yesterday. But that's not an excuse for not doing the homework. How can I know what the homework is? If only there was a kind-hearted teacher who would record and put the lessons on Moodle. I, I'm going to continue now. I feel my rage building up inside me. Right, now, uh, let's have a look as an example here. So here's our graph. And I want to calculate this area here. So, Let's imagine for the moment I have this function, and I call this function ax. <coughs> and what this function does, it would give me the total area from, let's say, as an example, the origin up until x. So, this one here is x plus h. So, for example, if I want this area here, If I want this area here, that would be AX plus H minus AX. So it would be the total area minus the other area. These are the piece left there. That must be Muna. Come on, hurry up. Why are you late? I suppose that's a good enough reason. Now, there's another way to calculate the area of that piece. If the piece is really small, we can say that it's roughly going to equal this square plus this triangle. Roughly. So, how big would the area of the rectangle be? Well, how big is the base? H. And what's the height? If I call this F of X. The height would be f of x. So it would be h multiplied f of x. Plus, now what about the triangle? What's the triangle? A half the base. What's the base? H. And what's the height? Ah, uh -huh. fx plus h minus fx. And that's because here to here is fx, then up to the top is fx plus h. So I just want this piece, so I minus them. Okay, so let's clean up that on the right. So we have h fx plus a half h fx plus h minus a half h fx. Well, the, that and that goes together to make a half h fx plus a half h fx plus h. Now, what I'll do next is I'll divide everything by h. So I get a x plus h minus a x all over h equals a half fx plus a half fx plus h. Now, if h was to go to zero and become really small, what would I get on the left? What would the left become if h is really small? No, don't, don't. you're doing this thing where you just have a wild guess at zero, one, and infinity. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. What will the left hand side become when h goes to zero? Come on, no, stop saying infinity. If you say, do you ever see that movie Pulp Fiction? 
you know, say infinity one more time. You know, you know the scene I'm talking about. Yeah. So don't say infinity again. What will the left hand side become? Oh, oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> Derivative. Remember the definition? Fx plus h minus fx over h? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then if h goes 0 on the right, you get a half f plus a half f, so in total? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is derivative, so how, what, what cancels a derivative? Antiderivative. So if I put an antiderivative on both sides, I get ax equals antiderivative f of x dx here. Plus, of course, the c. But you don't want the c here. How could you get rid of the c? Well, if you were now to put in limits here, b a, and then put in limits here, b a, do you need to write the c? No. no. So on the right you would get a b, f x, d x, and on the left, what do you think a b minus a a would represent? H. Well, I'm talking about on the graph. So it's area, but area of what? From. Uh, look, let me help you out here, okay? There's an example. I'll put in numbers and everything, okay? One, two, and three. So A1, what's A1? That's the area from 0 to 1. And A2? 0 to 2. Yes? Cool so far? And then A2 minus A1, what would that be? Area from 1 to 2. And then likewise, for example, A3 minus A2, what would that be? Area from 2 to 3. Very good, children. So now if I go back here, you get this result. The area from A to B equals this. Now, there's, let me put a little star here. You know, terms and conditions apply. So my terms and conditions here is that this only works if fx is a positive function. And in fact, if it's negative, it's quite easy to fix. If it's negative, then all you have to use is just put a little minus in the front here. <coughs> okay? So that has to be f has to be positive. Otherwise, use minus in front of the integration if it's underneath. And then there's a problem if it switches between positive and negative. But these are things we'll look at in the examples. The main result is that So the area from A to B, you integrate from A to B. Very useful result. So we'll look at an example now. So what we'll do is we'll pick an easy shape where we know the answer so we can see that it works. Okay? So my first example now. So let's take a nice easy one here. Here is a straight line. So I have y equals, let's just say, uh, 2x, something simple like that, yeah. And let's say this is 0 and this is 1. So what would the 
height here be? What point would this be? One and what would the y be? <coughs> Who said zero? You can see that it's clearly not zero. Did you say zero mb? You said infinity, was it? <laughs> What's the y here? Two. Two. <coughs> now, this shape is a triangle. So we know that the answer should be a half the base by the height. So the answer should be 1 <coughs> as the area. So let's check it using our new rule. So to calculate the area, what we do is we integrate from 0 to 1, see here to here, 2x dx. OK, so what's the antiderivative of 2x? Yeah, it'll be 2x squared over 2, which will just be x squared. Now, we put in the 1. So if I put in 1, 1 squared, 1 minus 0 squared. So the answer is indeed 1. OK, so that's our first example. So write that one down. Uh, that's given to you. The question would say, find the area between 0 and 1. So it's given. All of this here is given. So the question was looking for this area here. Okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, come on. There's only like two lines there. You got it? So we'll look at an example now, a little bit more realistic for what you get in the exam. Because that's a little bit too easy. It's too short. So let's have a look now. So here, y equals, minus x squared plus x. And I would like you to find this area, please. So, the area equals, what do you integrate? Minus, zero. Minus x squared plus x, but what are the limits? The yeah, you, I don't tell you the limits, but that's okay, because you can see it's where it crosses the x-axis. So the limits are the roots. So we have to solve for when this equals zero. Put it into your calculator, factorize it, quadratic formula, whatever, you get these two answers. Okay? So now, the area <coughs> would equal 0 to 1 um, minus x squared plus x dx. So, antiderivative would be minus x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2, 0 and 1. So that would be minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2 minus zeros. So a half minus a third is a sixth, I believe. So the area is 1 sixth units squared, if you want to write it in.
Okay. Oh, don't worry. I'll put it. Oh, yeah, no, I got it there. Okay. Now, next one now. Yes. No, sorry, Shaban, need to speed it up. I can't wait. I'm not going to hold everybody up just for you now. You're not that special, I'm sorry to tell you this. X minus 1, X minus 2, X minus 3. Okay. Can somebody, I'll go back to the notes. Can somebody just write this down, please? MB, you like doing work, don't you? Can you write this down for me? Now make sure you write it down correctly. You got that? Yes? Okay. So now we're going to look at an example. We've done a linear, a quadratic. Now let's have a look at a cubic. Okay. So with the cubic one now. MB, go for it. X cubed minus six X squared. Yeah. Plus eleven X minus six. And I want this area and I want this area. Now if this was an exam question, the question would be broken up into two parts. Part A will be find the solution to that cubic. And then part B will be to find the area. How do you find a solution to a cubic? What's the technique we use? What do we do? Come on! How do we solve a cubic? Not yet, no. Derivative. We did not have derivatives done when we did cubics. How did we solve a cubic? Completing the square. No. You're getting desperate now. No. <laughs> Not this. No. No, but that's not what gets you marks, MB. You have to try different values of X. And then, <laughs> once you find an answer that works, what do you do? Then long divide. So in this example here, when you try x equals 1, you'll find that it works. So therefore, what's the factor? X minus, x minus 1. Then you take x minus 1, you divide it into your cubic, and what's the result? Up the top will be a quadratic. And then you factorize the quadratic, and you discover the quadratic will have two factors, x minus 2, x minus 3. Therefore, the three answers in this one will be 1, 2, and three. So I'm skipping that because that's not what this lesson is about. We had a lesson on that near the start of the year. So now that you have your three solutions, how do we find the area? What you have to be very careful about here is that you must separate it into one to two and then two to three, but the two to three gets a minus because it's in the negative. If you just did it as 1 to 3, that would be wrong. You will get the wrong answer. It must be separated. So let's do that. Uh, I feel slowness. Okay. So let's do that at the top. So what we do is integrate 1 to 2 minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 dx minus integrate 2 to 3 minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 <sighs> is it not a minus? oh sorry it's not ok I think you confused me when you read it out, MB. There now. So sorry, I'm actually going up the page to make space here. 
Uh, so this one here, what would it become? X4, come on, antiderivative 4, minus 6x cubed over 3 plus 11x squared over 2 minus 6x. 1 and 2 minus the same thing. and now it's just a matter of typing that into your calculator 2 1 minus answer 3 2 minus answer take both answers minus them so I'll use derive just to get the answer don't worry I'll go back to that screen okay so what I did was first I integrate and we got this Yes? Now, what were the limits in the first one? Two. One and two, wasn't it? So, which do you put in first? Two. two. So, I'll sub in x is two. And I got minus two. And then I sub in the next one. What's the lower limit? One. one. So, I sub in one. And I got minus nine over four. And then we do the upper minus the lower. So that'd be 5 minus 6. So my first bracket here, this first bracket here, that's 1 over 4. So this one here was equal to 1 over 4 minus. Now let's do the second bracket. Okay, so what do I put in as the upper limit now? 3, is it, for the second bracket? 3 goes in first, okay? And then I put in, what's the lower limit? 2, is it? And then I minus them. So here it'd be line 9 minus line 10. That's minus 1 over 4. So the second one will be minus 1 over 4. And the total, therefore, is a half. The reason is the second piece, the region, is negative. So the minus in front is because, to, uh, if you want to think about it like this, it is like adding them, but the minus is on the function. You're flipping the function upside down. So if you think about it like this, if I have this function here and it's negative, fx, if I put a minus in front of it, what I do is I flip it the right way around. And so I can use my formula. So it's almost like you're taking your graph here, you keep the first piece the same, and then you flip the second one around when you put the minus in front. So that you can use your rule. All right, there you go. Is that too far zoomed out? Okay. So there are the two areas. So can you write those down? Yes? Zoom out. Do you write this down, MB? Write faster. Yes? If the number, so like instead of 2 it was minus 2? No. The only time, hang on, let's not get confused. So what are you asking me then? There's a four ways that add a minus behind the numbers. Yeah, that is only necessary when your function is underneath the x-axis. But the limits, the lower and the upper limit, can be any numbers, positive or negative. Okay, so there's one more example to do. Yes? If uh, 1 over 4 is 2, 
or minus minus? Yep. Because the second bracket here, this one here was minus 1 over 4, and this one here was 1 over 4, and there's a minus between them. <laughs> okay, next example now. What's wrong, guys? What? Nothing? Half unit or just half? Half, or a half unit squared if you want to write it like that, that's fine. Okay. So, we've got ourselves a line, and we've got ourselves a quadratic, and I would like this area. Now, who's got any ideas about how we could find that blue area there? Well, yes, the first thing you have to do is find where they meet. Well, that one there is clear enough. What's that one? Zero, zero. You do remember solving one linear and one quadratic. Remember? So again, I will not show you how to do that. But the answer will be one, two as the second point. And that is from the lesson on one linear and one quadratic. We'll give you these two points. Right, so after we've done that, now what do we do next? Yeah, but what function do we use? Yes. Undo. Yes, but of what? The, what do we do? So, okay, if we write down antiderivative, what limits do we use? Yes. Two to one. Zero to one. But now the real question is what do we put inside? Two x? Maybe. X squared plus X? Maybe. Four is Load? Maybe. Put first Yeah. Zero to one, and then we subtract it. So if you did that, this is one idea. If you did the zero to one, I'll just write Q for quadratic. Actually, you know what? Let me go to the side here. Let's look at this shape, and we can break it up. So if you did 0 to 1 of the, sorry, if you did 0 to 1 of the parabola, you see that the first problem is that part of it's negative, right, and part of it's positive. So you would actually have to find this point here, separate it. And then you could find these two areas, a bit like with my cubic. But I don't want only that. I then want this one here too. But then if you were to find this one here, then what you're doing is you're finding this. And then there's an overlap here, possibly. I mean, I'm not drawing this very clear. But let's maybe look back at the original, which was a little easier to draw. So if you did the quadratic first, what you would have to do is make this here, flip it around, and then what you would have to do is um, add it to this piece here. But then you'd see, ah, but then if you did the line, the line would also include this piece, so this gets counted twice. So maybe you shouldn't do this one. Maybe you should just do from here to here and get this piece. 
Then, if you did the line, you would get everything here. Ah, but then that's too much. You want to take that away. So then it starts getting really messy when you start thinking about it. So is there an easier way to do it? And the answer is yes. Um, let me draw another graph beside it. So if I zoom out. One and zero. So what is the difference between the line and the quadratic at the beginning? What's the difference in their heights? Well, there isn't any. So their heights will be zero. Now, as I move to the right, what happens? Do they get closer together, further apart? So what happens to their distances between them? They increase. So this would go up, wouldn't it? And then would it keep going up forever? No. Now what then happens? They stop, and then what happens to the distance? It starts to decrease, and then what happens when we get to the end? It's back down to the bottom. So what I've done is I've like I've made a new function which is the difference between the heights. And I've drawn it here for you. Now what happens if you find the area of this? Do you think it will match up with that? No. Ah, but it would actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm getting at. If you have two functions and one function is always above another function. So if I draw them like this, there's f and there's g. And if you want the area in between, in fact, what you do, there's a, there's b. It's again a to b, but what you put inside is f minus g. And that will give you the area of this piece here. Okay? And what's great is they don't even have to meet at the start and at the end. So they could be like this. So you have two here. This one goes up. And then this one goes down. And if you want this area, again, integrate f minus g. And then, let's use our brains here. What do you think happens Oops, if they swap places? So first the f is on top, the g is on bottom then the g is on top and the f is on bottom. What do you think you would have to do there? Well, here, that's f, that's g. We start off with f minus g, like normal. But then we have to split it. So if I have a, b, c, the first one would be a to b, and then the next one, b to c, f minus g, but then here, minus. And the reason for that is because it's like the height has gone negative. It swapped places. So, after all of those little examples, I just want to make the simple point that if you ever need to find the area that's trapped between two curves, all you actually have to do is make a new function, which is the upper function minus the lower function, and integrate that. So in this example, it would be 0 to 1, what is the upper one, the line or the quadratic? The line minus the quadratic. Now, what's the quadratic? What was it? X. Come on. Yeah, x plus x. So it'll be minus x now. So you see, I think we all agree that is much, much easier than trying to separate it into different regions. So this would be. Oh, and for some peculiar reason, in most maths books, they don't show you this way. They, if you've seen it before, they like to separate into different regions, okay? So this would be um, 2x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2. Yeah, isn't that right? Yes. Oh, I could have put these together. Oh, well. Um, 0 to 1. So what would that equal? Um, well, the zero one is I don't care about. So putting in the one, I get one minus one over three minus one over two. So that's one sixth, is it? Is it? Yes. Yep. All right.
Let me see which ones you should do. So let's have a look. I think number nine to number thirteen. You can start them now, nine to thirteen. And I divide you definite integral only one over x. Mm -hmm. I think this sounds similar to the question. Oh, Andy's not here. He had last time. So this is about one over x, yeah? Actually, on the uh, book, five over x, but they have done that. Five over x. So in fact, this one here is actually, if you look at it, five, one over one x plus zero. And that has its own special rule. It's five log 1x plus 0, or in other words, 5 log x. You see, because if you write it like this, you probably came across this problem where you get 5x 0 over 0. So in fact, 1 over x is a special case, and it always becomes log x. Go back to the... Oh, hang on, let's see. Where, what do you want, Shaban? The, this one here? Okay, let me just stop the recording here.